Hi, so I'm with Noor, who's an electronics engineer here at Dyson. So what does your kind of average day at Dyson look like? Average day at Dyson, yes. that's quite a difficult question. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose every day is probably quite different. Every day is definitely very different. There's days when I don't go into the lab at all. Yeah. And I'll probably be on like desk space with uh, multiple screens in front of me looking at circuits. Or days where I just really want to go back to like pen and paper. Yeah. And just think about what it is that I have to do. There's a lot of thinking some days, just, yeah. you know, purely thinking. And then that sort of builds up towards simulation. I quite enjoy being able to put my circuit in a tool on the computer and quite quickly like understand how it's going to behave. Yeah. And then from simulation, you go into your lab and you'll start testing it. So you have quite a split of hands-on testing as well as software design. It's quite varied what you can actually get up to. Yeah, absolutely. Very varied. Because I always thought when I was at sixth form that engineering was very much like mechanics, like boiler suits. And it's when I came to Dyson, I realised it actually can be quite like glamorous in a way. Like Absolutely, because it's such a creative job. Yeah. Like, you can't be an engineer just by, you know, having logical or matsy skills. And you definitely don't need to be a guy to be an engineer. No. Like, you know, people who think that it's a guy's field, it's really not. No. You know, there's, it's such a creative field and it's something girls do really, really well. And having that diversity in a team, having girls and guys, really helps because we do think differently. Yeah. You know, and that brings out ideas that you wouldn't in a completely female or a completely male team. Yeah. So as someone who is successful here at Dyson, and has been through school and university. What do you wish you'd known back in sixth form? Do you know something that I've struggled with time and time again at uni um, and even at work is imposter syndrome. And that's actually really common in clever or successful people. Um, and it's when regardless of proof of your achievements, you know, say you're getting 100% all your time. Yeah. And you still underestimate yourself. You still have that doubt that I'm not good enough. Yeah. And that comes from, you know, just, just being out of place. For me, maybe it's because there's not enough female engineers. Maybe. You know, I, I, I don't know. But it's that doubt that you need to be aware of, that facts don't support that doubt. Yeah. You need to recognize that you're doing well at school, you're a good kid, and so you are capable, you will be successful. If you want to do it, do it, don't be scared. Yeah. You know, don't be afraid, and don't let anybody else tell you what you can and you can't do. Yeah, I think it's definitely one of those things where if you put your mind to it, you can achieve literally anything. Like Absolutely. You can work really hard and you can get great results. But I think one of the things I've learned at Dyson, which is less, picked up on in schools is just try it, try something new. Like the way we solve problems is by just looking at things from a different angle, different mm -hmm. perspective. And I think that's something that you can carry forward in any any part of yeah. life. Like you're right. It's important to recognize your comfort zone. Yeah. And step out of it. You know, you might think uh engineering's not my thing, but maybe give it a shot. Yeah. What advice would you give a sick former having reached the level you are now in Dyson? Be fearless, pick the degree that you want to pick, pick engineering because it's fun yeah and don't let anybody else tell you that you might not be good at it because you don't know until you've tried.